What's up everybody, Jason for Vasa Productions. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the very basics of how DaVinci Resolve Fusion works and how to work with nodes coming up. All right, so here we go. We're inside the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve. I wanna show you first the four different ways that you can start a fusion composition because it can be a little confusing at first. I've got some B-roll clips here. I'm gonna take these, drag them into the timeline here. I'm gonna chop off just really quickly the end of this clip and also the end of this clip just to make them about 10 seconds total between the two. So we've got our two clips right here of our runner. The first way I'm gonna show you how to create a fusion composition is to take the fusion composition here from the toolbox and the effects library. Just take one, bring it in. By default, this composition is five seconds in length. You can take this and make it longer if you want, uh, but I usually have them in a shorter span of time. Sometimes I'll go up to 20 seconds on a fusion composition, depending on what I'm doing. Now, all I have to do is add some music to this, and I'm gonna add music to show you something about fusion, at least in Resolve 17.2. Chop the end of that song off there. Now, if I go into Fusion, you'll see I can't see my video and I can't hear my audio. But using Fusion compositions like this is a good non-destructive way to work on clips. And all I mean by that is, let's say I'm working on a Fusion composition and I'm in one of these video clips and I make some mistakes and I can't figure out what to do. You either have to figure out what your mistakes specifically are, why things aren't working, or you gotta start from scratch. Using these are a little more non-destructive, a little easier when you're editing. So we go back into Fusion here, and let's say I wanna add some text over this video. Take a text node, just left click and drag this text plus node, and take the output of it, and just left click and drag that into the media out just like this. Now left click on text, and we can type in runner, go to size and bring it up, and go to edit, and our text appears right over the top of that. Nice and easy, right? Pretty basic, pretty simple. Well, that's the first one. But just remember when you're editing like this with the Fusion Composition and you go into the Fusion tab, you've got no video and no audio. So it's a little tough that way. Let's just delete this one for a second here real quick. And I'm gonna show you the second way to do it. The second way to do it non-destructively is using an adjustment clip. Adjustment clips can be used for color grading, all sorts of different things. You can also use them as fusion comps. I typically don't use them because of the performance of playback and the edit timeline is really poor, okay, typically. Go into fusion here real quick though, and you can see I've got a media out and we've got a media in. If I hit play, you've got audio, that music, right? So you can hear that and you can see your video. So that helps a lot with timing if you're doing anything in particular with timing. You can take a text node here, left click and drag this right over this yellow line until it turns blue and just let go. It creates a merge and then you have your text right here. By default, when you drag something over the line and you connect it, it will always create a merge node because you need merges to add different elements, okay? So I've got my text selected and type in fitness this time and increase the size here, just like this. Go back to the Edit tab, and there's our text right there. Super simple, super easy, using an adjustment clip. I'm gonna delete the adjustment clip quick, and we're gonna show you the next way to do this. If I go here, I'm just gonna make a cut in this clip and a cut in this one, and I come back and select both clips by highlighting them, and right click, and left click here for New Fusion Clip, you can also create a fusion composition by doing that with the video. This is a destructive way of doing things, right? If you're doing an edit and you make a mistake, this can be a bit tough. I do like the non-destructive ways, the first two I showed you over these third and fourth methods. Go into fusion now though, and you got your media out, and you've got your media in. If I wanna add text again, take its output here if I want, I can just write into there if I wanna do that, or I can just take the text here and just drop it here until it turns blue, let go, it'll create the merge, and get our text right there. So two different ways to add that text. Type in fitness again, bring the size up, go to edit, and easy does it, right? Perfect, okay. Now, let's undo that work a little bit there that we all did. I'm just using my shortcut to undo. 
And the last way to add a fusion composition is just if you've got the playhead over either clip like this, you can add a fusion composition just by going and hitting the fusion tab. It's already a fusion composition like that. So again, same thing here, text, hold it over the line, or you can take its output and just drag it here and let go. And then I'm gonna go runner here again and bring it up, go to edit, and there it is. All right, so super simple. That's the four different ways to create a fusion composition. That's a little complicated that there's that many, but it's just to give you an idea. You've got two non-destructive methods and two destructive. And with this one where you've got the playhead over it again, when you are in the Fusion tab, you will get audio playback if you've got audio playback. The only way you don't get audio playback is if you use just a straight up Fusion composition over the top of your clips. All right, so I'm gonna take that Fusion composition the way I normally work, the non-destructive style, and place that over the top of these two clips and show you the flow of Fusion. So we've got our media out here. Now we can't see our composition, but that's okay. I kinda have an idea of where we want things to be. Bring that to the right. And again, you can do a lot of quick and easy things here. Let's take a background first, all right? We're gonna take a background, bring that background node in. It's basically a color solid. If you're familiar with After Effects or Apple Motion 5, take the output, bring that into the media out, and we've got this black background. Take this black background, select it, come up to color. I'm gonna left click on blue here and hit okay. And now we've got a blue background. If we go to the edit tab, that's exactly what we see before our runner. Now we have this blue background. Go back into Fusion, and what I'm gonna do is make shapes by using masks. So it's kind of a weird way to do it, but you get used to it pretty quickly. With background selected, come up here to the ellipse and left click on it. You've got the ellipse mask, you've got a rectangle here, B-spline, you know, and then you've got your other one here. So you've got a couple different ones, polygon and B-spline. And what I can do is take the ellipse and just left click the edge of it, and I can drag that in or drag it out just like this. To add text to this, it's gonna be pretty simple. I cannot add a text node into this mask and have it create a merge. You can see it won't actually do anything. If I was to take this and add it in, it will actually connect and I could type in runner, but we're not seeing anything. So it won't connect that way, but how I can connect the text is to take the output of the text, bring it into the background and just let go of this and then I can type in runner. And you can see we've got our runner text right there, right? Super simple, super easy. If I go back to the edit tab, we can see it appears right there. Hit play. And it'll stop, you know, at the end of this clip right here. Perfect. So basically in Fusion, everything works for the most part and makes logical sense from left to right. So our background is this blue circle right here with this mask over it, that's blue. The text is to the right of the blue background, which means it's technically on top, all right? So you can see these different colored connections between our nodes. So this background has a yellow connection to this merge right here, and the text has a green connection to this merge. So whatever's connected to a merge node, like this text is connected, the runner word and the background, whatever's green will go over the top of yellow, okay? So if I just disconnect the text by double left clicking and disconnect the background by double left clicking and put the background into the green and the text into this yellow, you can see all you can see is the circle, right? You don't see the text anymore. The text is still here, but it will not appear because the blue background is now over the text. If I disconnect the blue background by double left clicking, runner appears again, right? But we don't have our blue circle. So double left click on the text, just take the background right into the yellow, take the text right into the green, and we've got back exactly what we wanted, right? What if I wanna animate this? What's the easiest way to do that? You wanna use transforms typically to animate any objects like this that are together. So just left click and drag this transform over this line until it connects, okay, and then let go. And you got the transform right here. And let's just say by frame 24, I come up here on the XY position and hit this keyframe. That means it's gonna be right here. That's where it's gonna end up. And I'm gonna go to frame zero 
and this transform still selected and just left click and drag the X position of it off the screen like this. And if I hit spacebar to play, it animates on. But you can see my animation, it's just kind of robotic. It's not very smooth. I wanna come up to the settings here, left click this and select motion blur. That will apply motion blur to the animation. You can see now that circle's blurry, right? If I turn this off, there's no more blur. We add motion blur to most animation or almost all animation to make things look more realistic. It's still a rigid animation though. So what I wanna do is come up to the spline, left click on that, left click on transform and zoom to fit. I click on that and left click and drag my mouse here over the keyframes and hit S to smooth them and hold down option and left click and drag this handle out till it matches this first one right here. Now it's gonna animate on smooth with that motion blur, which looks really good. It looks a lot more professional, right? Come over to the edit tab real quick. Just hit play. There, super simple, super basic, right? Let's go back to the Fusion tab for just a second, unclick the spline so we can see a little bit more of the space. I'll show you again this left to right workflow and this top to bottom workflow. Just as an example, if I was to take another background right here, bring that into the space and just double left click to disconnect that runner text, right? So the runner text is unselected and take this background and bring this into the merge, okay? It's just a color solid at this point, so it's covering the whole screen. To get that out of there, I can use a mask here. So we have an ellipse mask again, and just take the edge of it and left click and drag it in, right? Now we have a black circle inside of a blue one, right? Now what I would do though is take this text and pipe it right into this background and let go. And the text now appears on top of that, right? Because the text is green and the background here is yellow and this background is also yellow. So this text is taking place to the right of this background and below this background and it's green. So it takes priority over those objects. It is essentially on top of them, even though the background in ellipse is here. So in your brain, you see that this is on top and say, wait a minute, this should be over the text, but it's not. The one way to change that, right, would be to disconnect the yellow, double click and disconnect this and put this background into the green and put this text into the yellow, but then you can't see your text, right? There's no text here at all now. So we're just gonna undo those. And then we've got this back here. And again, we've got this animation now, nice and smooth on the screen over in the edit tab. And we can see that playing right away. So that's essentially how Fusion works in its most basic form. Green over yellow, left to right, top to bottom. But this text being underneath is actually technically on top because the green connection takes precedence over the yellow. And another thing to remember is anytime you add new elements, right? So if I take another text node and bring that in here and I connect this down the line here to the transform, right? It's always gonna create a merge. We have three different colored connections on every single merge node. We have the green, right? We have the yellow, which is second in command. Then we've got this blue, right? Which is your merge, your effect mask. And then you've got its output. So you have three that you can really use and a fourth to connect it to the next node down the line. So if I use a mask here and just bring this rectangle mask in and connect its output to the masking element of this merge node, you can see with the word fitness can actually take that out of there real quick. If I want to do this and shrink the size of this mask, just like this, and I wanted to animate the word fitness, I could either use the text node to do it or use a transform. I'll use a transform to keep it more concise. But if I want to animate the word fitness on, I just click this keyframe here, come back, you know, 15, 20 frames. And I would just do this and it would hide itself. Left click on settings, motion blur, left click on spline, left click here, left click over both keyframes, S to smooth, hold option on a Mac, alt on windows and drag that handle over. Now we've got the circle animating on and we have the text animating on together.
So that's how you can use masks to connect them to merge nodes. Go back to the edit tab, we can see that playback. And that's the basics of how Fusion really works. I didn't wanna make this overly complicated, so I hope this was not too complicated, but remember, it's basically a left to right workflow and a top to bottom workflow. Just kinda of reprogramming your brain a little bit to think a little bit differently compared to layers. It's similar to layers in some ways, and then there's some things that are totally different. But with a node-based workflow, you definitely have more control over what you're doing. It's easier to dig back into some of your old projects and rework them if you need to for any reason, because they're not buried within layers and layers and groups and groups and pre-comps and all these different things. So that's the advantage of using Fusion over even a Motion 5 or After Effects. All right, that wraps it up for this video on the basics of DaVinci Resolve Fusion and how the node system works. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash it like and subscribe button. I'm Jason for Vasa Productions. We'll see you next time.